the stars foretell a major election upset and some significant upheavals in the developments around and after the U.S. elections. So let's look at the astrology to shed some light on what's coming. All right, folks, it's time for a U.S. election astrology update. In this video, we are going to do three things. I'm going to look at the chart of the United States in order to understand this moment in time, what it means for the development of the U.S., what is really at stake in this election. We're also going to look at the individual charts of the candidates to see you know, who has a good chance of taking this thing in November. And lastly, I'm going to look at the chart of the U.S. elections, of the elections, basically, the day of the elections, because that chart has a lot of information. If we know how to decode that, it is quite telling on what awaits the U.S. and, in extension, the world, because when big things happen in the U.S., the world is watching, as always. Now, this being said, I have to add to this, I made a video earlier this year on the U.S. elections, sometime in spring, early spring, I made a video where I predicted that Joe Biden would step out of the race, and I predicted it with the exact time frame. So I said, like, end of June, July, at the latest, it's going to happen. And that's exactly when it happened as well. And what I did not predict, however, was that the Democrats would go with Kamala Harris. As you'll see later on when we get to the candidates and their charts, there may have been better choices than her, but for whatever reason, you know, the choice was made to go with Kamala Harris. A lot of the other stuff that I said in that previous video about the coming upheavals and the really phase of transition and change that the U.S. is going through, shaking the very foundations of the nation, a lot of that stuff is not just true, but it's actually now becoming much clearer what it means as time is progressing. So we can see this by looking at the U.S. independence chart. That's the best way to, to start this analysis, really. And when we look at the U.S. chart, this is basically the national chart of the U.S. And it shows us what's generally going on, right, in terms of the collective consciousness, the collective soul of the nation. And in this chart, you have this very you know, unsettling in many ways, square from Uranus on to the natal moon. The natal moon, right, is in Aquarius. It's like the freedom-loving nation, the people whose soul is this kind of freedom-loving identity, right? And, and that's, that's that, you know, the, the nation's soul, the collective unconscious, which is the moon, is being unsettled by not just any Uranus, but Uranus is on Algol here. Algol is on the 26th degree of Taurus, and that's where Uranus is. So Uranus, this is not just any Uranus. This is not just kind of upheavals and disruptions and disruptive innovations and all of that. But this is like malicious, malevolent, with Algol being here, right? Applications of disruption, right? not disruptive innovation, but disruptive destruction, basically, right? That's, that's affecting and impacting the collective unconscious throughout this time. So you have these things like healthcare-related, mandated healthcare-related activities, uh, which I cannot talk much more about for reasons that you surely understand. You have uh, the breakdown of borders, the influx of a lot of people who are hostile in many ways to the nation, right? This is typical of Uranus on Algol. Uranus is a breakdown or a disruption on Algol means malevolent or malicious and it's squaring the people and the moon, right? So really typical sign of this people flowing into the country who are in many ways malevolent for the country and for the people and doing so en masse. And you have just generally disruption of security, right? Moon is also security. So in your personal chart, moon is emotional security, emotional well-being, right? In the national chart, it's the security and the well-being of the people. And you have that obviously being disrupted and disturbed quite 
strongly, quite massively, with the inflation, with prices, with uncertainties that are rampant, and so on. So this is a kind of a pivotal moment for the national soul, right? The national soul is going through these upheavals. And then as you're going into the election itself, right? As we're getting closer to the election, you have two things that are notable. One is that in October, you know, in the buildup, Jupiter, transiting Jupiter is on Mars, right? Mars is in the seventh house. So the US Mars in the seventh house is basically, right? The, the attitude of going to battles and fighting and duking it out with others pretty quickly, getting aggressive quickly, right? Being very quick to trigger, trigger happy, right? And this trigger happy attitude with regards to foreign enemies and, and open enemies, seven houses, open enemies, right? This is going to get boosted a lot with Jupiter on it, right? It's going to get a major, major boost in the coming time, especially. It's already there, but coming time, especially. So this means a heightened chance of belligerent escalations backed by and funded by or even directly triggered by the U.S., right? Keep this in mind. This is a possibility that even just before the elections, you're going to see a big boost in conflicts, global conflicts, you know, foreign conflicts. And then the other thing that's important is that when the election, as the election approaches, you have this very, very important and concerning constellation here with Mars and Pluto. You see this Mars and Pluto are going into an opposition with each other. They're going to be in that opposition for a long time, actually for, you know, almost six months because Mars moves forward, then moves back again, right? And then kind of moves out and comes back. This is a long-term thing. This is a really long-term thing. Then moves out a little bit and then comes in again. See here, comes in again after, you know, the retrograde motion is over and comes in again in April and then only leaves here, right? You see, so this is a long-term thing. And especially in the few weeks after the election, especially from November, November 6th, you see here, November 2, from November 5th, right? And going into January, right? January, early January, which is usually when the inauguration happens. This entire time, the transition time between the elections and the, and the inaugurations, right? Is going to be marked by this. And what is it? Mars opposite Pluto, is generally speaking, it's hostilities, right? Outbreak of open hostilities. That's what it means on a global stage. We're going to see much more of the wars expanding everywhere in these months, right? I have another video on that if you want to check that out. But specifically for the U.S., this outbreak and this intensification of hostilities that is going to happen, it falls where? It falls on the U.S. Pluto, right? Because why? Because the U.S. is currently going through a Pluto return. As I'm sure you know, if you're looking into astrology, U.S. is going to a Pluto return right now, right? Which means the kind of, you know, epochal and historical need to shed the identity and for all the darkness of the identity to come out and for a reinvention of the deep identity, right? Of the deep laying and deep seated layers of the collective unconscious, right? So this is all happening right now where... Who is the nation made of? You know, who is America? What is America? That's really the question. What is America? And all the darkness is coming out right now around this question. So all the stuff about elites controlling people, the destructive wars that America has been waging on the world in the name of those elites, the culture wars, all of this is part of this. And it's going to get triggered for these months. Yeah, for these four months, three, four months, especially, it's going to get triggered. And how? It's going to get triggered in violent ways, potentially, right? Because Mars opposite Pluto is outbreak, open outbreak of violence, right? So that it doesn't look, it doesn't look very calming, to say the least, when you look at it with the already kind of heightened state of tensions that exists in the U.S. That you think about it, that okay, now you're going to have on top of that several months right after the election where it looks like some type of violence may break out, right? Obviously, God forbid for people to get hurt and so on, but this is what the stars are very clearly indicating. 
Now let's keep this in mind. As we move on to the next part, and I will look at the charts of the individual candidates, we will understand which of the candidates have the best chance, right? What, what their prospects look like. And then after that, I'm going to go to the U.S. election chart. And that's when we put all the puzzle pieces together. And I can tell you the prediction, the prognosis that I have for the coming time. So let's look at Kamala Harris first. You know, I told you in the beginning, I wasn't really, you know, thinking that she would be chosen. The Democrats clearly don't have an astrologer or a good astrologer who knows what they're doing in their camp, right? Because if they had, they would have known that with these transits that Kamala Harris has right now, this is not, you know, this is not somebody that you want running for the highest office, you know, the biggest kind of distinction in their life. You know, you have the Saturn on top here, starting from now, going all the way from September, October, November, right? She has Saturn transiting in opposition to her planets down here. She's got the Uranus Pluto with Venus, which is her kind of tumultuous life that in which she's very charming and very powerfully charming. You know, Pluto, Venus, powerfully charming. And, you know, she goes through these upheavals in her life. Things change a lot in her life. And she can have some very radical, sudden shifts that can also be very positive in some ways. You also have the Uranus on her Jupiter all this time. And that's that could be a sudden shift in your fortunes, right? A sudden, unexpected, massive shift in your fortunes. It's like the wheel of fortune being turned by the goddess Fortuna. And, you know, you were here and suddenly you're there, right? This, is con this kind of stuff can happen with Uranus, Jupiter transits. So this on its own is not bad. And, and you have as well, you have the Jupiter, her, the transiting Jupiter, is from the 12th house, right? The 12th house means you have friends in the background, powerful friends in the background, right? Who are supporting you. And obviously she does all the major super PACs and all the establishment and literally everybody in the establishment, all the powerful, you know, billionaires and so on. They're, they're all backing her. Wall Street and everybody, all the establishment is backing her. And that's here, six style to Mars. So this is, these are positive signs. I can see that as positive, right? But at the same time, you have this very, very difficult, super difficult, super difficult transit of Saturn on Chiron. Saturn on Chiron, a very, very painful time. Extremely painful time. She might be laughing outside, but she's going to have an extremely difficult and painful time in these coming months, right? All her inadequacies are going to be shown to the world. This is literally what it means. Look, Chiron is your point of weakness. Her point of weakness is in the 10th house, right? Her public persona. That's where she feels inadequate or vulnerable about it, right? And Saturn comes here and says like, okay, all of your inadequacies are going to be shown to everybody. Literally everybody in the world will know your inadequacies in these two months, right? This is what the chart shows you. Do you want, you know, that for, per, for a person who's literally just running to, to, you know, win over the masses, become president? And then Saturn at the same time is opposing here the, here the conjunction down here. So Saturn in opposition to Pluto. This is like a painful breakdown, right? A kind of intense breakdown of structures that you can't, protect yourself against, and then Saturn in opposition to Uranus, right? This is like a sudden breaks in your path and in your structures that give you security, sudden breaks in your foundations, right, that give you security. So, and this is going to go on until the elections for her, right? Until the elections. So it doesn't really look, look very good for her. She might have some good days here and there, like the a debate that's coming on, that's coming up on September 9th. You see there's a debate coming up with Trump on September 9th. And Sun is going to be on Venus here on that day, right? So she will make a good uh, figure, fare buona figura. She's gonna, you know, she's gonna be well-spoken and charming, right? She's gonna win over some people. But this does not change the fact that apart from a couple of days here and there, where she might get some small wins. These entire three months from now till 
till November, they're marked by this really painful kind of making public and making visible for everyone to see her vulnerabilities and in the process, breaking down her security and throwing her into very difficult and dark situations. This is what this transit means, right? This is what she's got coming up for the next three months. So now what about the next guy? What about Donald Trump? Donald Trump, he made a big surprise move when, I mean, for many people, when he took Robert Kennedy into his campaign, right? I did another video on RFK and RFK has a great year this year when it comes to uh, success, when it comes to public recognition, when it comes to a chance to actually make a big difference, right? He has a great time right now in his life. One of the best times in his life. I did a video on this. I looked at this. You might find it if you dig deeper, if you search. By the way, also, as you're here right now, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you are subscribed, make sure to hit the notification bell. Otherwise, you miss the videos that I'm doing. So make sure to do that so you don't miss them and like this video as well, do all of that. And now RFK, so RFK has a great, you know, a great time in, in, his, in his arc, basically, in his character arc right now. And so does, so does Trump, so does Trump. And I'm going to show you in a second when I look at their charts. But on the other hand, these, I mean, you know, he, Trump just made it even harder for the establishment to accept him. They already have you know, they're scared. They, uh, you know, they don't know what to do with this. They're, they're trying to find a way out. They're trying to find an exit because Trump, obviously, he goes against everything that still, even though there's, even though he's presenting himself as a more harmless version of who he was in 2016, he's still the guy who's, you know, who could take down NATO, who could take down the secret services, right? If he becomes more comfortable and he's probably got an ax to grind, right? After these last four years, after what he feels like, you know, he was taken out uh, unjustly and he was maltreated by lawfare and so on and so forth. So people are going to be scared in the establishment. And now on top of that, on top of that, you also have this guy, RFK, who has made it his mission to take down Big Pharma. To take down, you know, the 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 healthcare is the healthcare industry that is basically more interested in controlling people, making money of people, as opposed to healing people, right? So they're together taking on the biggest interest, the biggest establishment interest, some of the biggest interest that you can take on. And this, you know, it doesn't exactly endear them to the powers that be. And the powers that be are are powerful, right? They're they're you can't just disregard them. They have they have all the levers. They have all the invisible levers as well. So, but when you look at their individual charts, this is a super interesting. They're, therefore, exactly because of this, is a super interesting moment in the U.S. political history, but also global political history because we haven't seen this anywhere really, right? This kind of this kind of surge this kind of upsurge against the establishment which we're seeing right now in this in this ticket with with Trump and Kennedy and yeah it's Vance on there I'm not going to talk much about Vance because he's not that important so uh with Trump's with Trump's transits that you know every astrologer who knows what he's doing would be able to tell you Right, that he's got throughout this whole time now going into the election, he's got Jupiter on Uranus and on his son. He's going to be totally surging in popularity, right? And he's going to be super innovative and successful with innovative technologies, right? He's already doing the podcast tour. You know, contrast that with Kamala Harris doing one interview where she's completely controlled and probably has even, you know, an earpiece telling her what to say. And then Trump going there and just chatting, you know, just kind of having open, free conversations with everybody on podcast, you know, and just speaking to the people directly, basically. And you can see him being successful with these new technologies, right? This is also Jupiter transit on Uranus. He's even had success with his own platform, right? With Truth uh, Social, which, you know, has a valuation currently, which is completely unrealistic, but that's another story. And now, 
this is going to continue until the election, right? This is the this is the opposite of what you see with Kamala Harris. This is like the best kind of transit that you want to have with somebody going into an election. There's going to be one more time where Trump, people in Trump camp should be careful, where people could come after him physically, and that's here, right? This is in October, around October 18th. October 18th, you have here the Mars on Saturn and the sun in a square to this Saturn as well. Not as bad as the, the transit which we had Mars and Uranus exactly on the MC where he was, he was shot at. But this is another time when he should be careful, right? October 18 around this time. This is the only other time frame. This is the only other chance around this time, October, mid-October. This is the only other time that he could potentially be taken out still in other ways, right? So if he gets through this, which God willing, this is what's going to happen, then the elections itself pretty much, you know, looks like a done deal for, for Trump. If you look at it, you know, you're, gonna, you're going into the elections with super strong transits while your opponent is going into the elections with weak transits, you know, very, very difficult and hard time. And same for RFK. I'm not going to do RFK here as well, but same for him, the coming time, like rise in power, uh, celebrating successes and so on. So does this mean that simply, you know, Trump's going to win and that's it? You know, it's not that easy. It's not that simple. Why? Because as I said before, as I've been saying, this is not a normal election where it's okay, who's going to be more successful? This is literally something that could break the U.S. You have all of this animosity. There's some people, you know, who think that who are, you know, following the, the mainstream news line and who think that Trump is the worst thing that could ha ever happen to the country. There is the establishment itself, obviously, who they're they don't want somebody in there who could take down NATO, who could take down the secret services, who could take down healthcare, right? The, the, the pharma, big pharma powers, right? So they don't want somebody who could basically destroy the system that their livelihoods is based on. And what does that mean for the prospects of the election? We have one more puzzle piece in this investigation where we can shed some light on what it means. And that's the chart of the election itself. So the chart of the election, you see this here right now. I've got this calculated for November 5th, 24 Washington, right? So starting in Washington, you know, don't, you know, we can't really look at the ascendant MC at all because obviously the election starts in different places at different times, but this is a good approximation. We don't look so much at the, the Ascendant and MC. We mostly we're going to look at the, the constellations itself. The constellation is very telling. Like any other mundane astrology constellation, for an event, this tells you the general nature of the event that we can expect. Plus, the forces that are constellated in this event, in the background, right, kind of influencing and shaping things, either more openly or more implicitly from the background. All of that we can see in the astrology chart. Okay, so what do we see here? First thing, the sun is here. We got a nice sun in trine with Saturn. And this, interestingly, is actually in a trine as well to the natal sun of the US. The natal sun in the US chart is here. It's an exact grand trine together, basically. I don't have it in here, but so, this tells you that there's going to be some stability coming into the presidency, coming into the White House. A lot of stability will come into the White House. On a, you know, this is okay. That sounds good. You know, that's not a bad thing if you're interested in a stable U.S., right? But who's coming into power here? Let's look at the chart. And this is something that, you know, most astrologers don't ever go this deep in their analysis. They look at the, you know, the constellations and so on, but they don't go really, really deep with the asteroids and the fixed stars where you have all the nuances and all the details, right? So we need to do that. And when you do that, you've got here on the sun, you got on the sun, you've got the following asteroids. So I'm going to put this somewhere where you can see better. You've got here on the sun, you've got, you see Kaiser, okay? Kaiser, you got Rockefeller, Rockefeller, and Narcissus, okay? Kaiser, Rockefeller, Narcissus on Sun, okay? And this is in opposition, 
opposition to Washington, Washingtonia. You see here, there's a chart, here's the asteroid called Washington. It's in a direct opposition, okay? So what does it mean? Put the words together. Literally, you got to put the words together in astrology. So you have here the emperor who is a Rockefeller or who is a billionaire who is a narcissist, okay? The narcissist emperor billionaire is literally, this is what's written here, right? Is on the sun. And what is the narcissist billionaire emperor doing? He is opposing Washington. You see here, in opposition to Washington, directly opposing Washington. Or you could say he's triumphantly entering Washington. You know, this is one way that's possible, right? Or he's opposing Washington. It's both possible. And you got here, this is actually Concordia. Concordia is, stands for, you know, peace and, and, you know, social consensus. And you got something else here, Zhulong. Zhulong is, is a, it stands for a massive shift in the people. Another one here, Laban, this stands for social psychology, you know, crowd psychology. So a massive social concordance or movement which carries this narcissistic emperor billionaire, right, into Washington. This is what we're seeing here. It's written in the chart. This is not my judgment. This is the judgment of the celestial judgment. It's, it's written in a chart, right? I'm literally just reading it for you. And then what does that mean for the U.S.? What does that mean? That's on its own. Okay, does that mean that Trump will win? Well, so far, this looks like a, another clear sign that Trump will win. He has a better transit and he has the election chart, which kind of seems to have his name written into it, right? It seems to have like his marker written into it, right? But now what else do we have? We have, in addition to that, remember, remember when I spoke about, remember when I spoke about the Mars-Pluto opposition, the Mars-Pluto opposition, which is very difficult, it's going to be very difficult and it's going to be about violence breaking out and hostilities, open hostilities. This is going to be on the Pluto return of the U.S. and it's going to be there for four or five months, right? And especially for the three months right after the election. And you have here some very concerning placements. You have Asmodeus and Baal, the Lord of Demons and Baal, the Lord of Hell one of the lords of hell, Forbes, rich people, right? Forbes is rich people. And this is on Mars. And this is opposing here. You got here with Pluto, you got Weimar, Weimar. Weimar is interesting. Weimar is basically the Weimar Republic, right? This is to in, in Germany in the 20s. This is the time when Germany was in total chaos, complete chaos, and everybody was fighting. And that's when Hitler came to power, right, in, in Germany. So you have Weimar here. And you have Karl Marx here, Karl Marx, you see this, Karl Marx and Rote Kapelle, Rote Kapelle, this is a, this stands for, this is very interesting, there's several asteroids very prominently placed here that stand for anti-fascist movements, communist movements, anti-fascist movements, or resistance movements that fight against fascists. You know, you can interpret this now whichever you, way you want, I mean, you can interpret this in couple of different ways we have several markers that point towards similar things so just to mention them quickly here Stauffenberg who was a leader in the resistance against the Nazis and here Weisse Kapelle is another one here okay so what does it mean basically we have here a breakout of violence right which is going to mark the months after the election and there's going to be a lot of elements of Antifa in there Antifa or communist movements or social revolutionaries or social disruptions of various types and somehow we see here Forbes you know rich people somehow involved in this being attacked or being backing this different ways to interpret this right and then what we have here is one more constellation that's super interesting and important to look at and that's this T square here, this red square, right, which is between Jupiter and Venus, Moon, and Neptune here, okay, Neptune, you got Saturn here too, but Saturn is actually, Saturn is in opposition 
to Democritus. Okay, Saturn in opposition to Democritus. So this is another sign. Could be read as the defeat of the Democrats. Could also be read as the defeat of democracy. Defeat of democracy. Why? Because Saturn opposition to Democritus. Okay. Now, Neptune here in this T square. Let's look at this T square a little bit more. The T square. We've got here Moon. Moon and Venus. Moon is on galactic center, right? So very important and central people's development and movement. And this is in a T square with Neptune. Okay, Neptune is for stands for deception, especially when it's in a square to Jupiter. It stands for deception, right? So deceiving faith, deceiving beliefs, deceiving beliefs, right? Deceiving beliefs impacting the people okay so do we have here the signs for deception around the election i'll leave that up to you to think about that we definitely have the signs for deception some sort of large deception impacting the people right because this is what it is jupiter square neptune is false beliefs right beliefs is jupiter neptune is disturbed or deceptive right and then this these false beliefs are impacting the people which is moon right this is in here too so now what do we interpret this as we could take this you know further and interpret this different ways in astrology what you have is you have basically energy fields that are potentials and these potentials show you particular things that can happen now you need to bring your interpretation into this and make it make sense and you need to do that by using the right intuition and the right vision cap capabilities the right vision capabilities you know which you need to develop in many ways but what i shared with you here is that certain parameters are already set and those parameters are that if donald trump is not you know prevented from going into this election he will be triumphant he will triumphantly go into Washington with some big social movement behind him. And at the same time, there will be some massive unrest and upheavals that will mark the next few months, the months that follow the elections, and potential issues around deception, potential issues around deception and maybe even a contested election, because that would be very fitting with the marks of deception and mass deception and beliefs of people right like false beliefs and so on and so forth all the stuff that i showed you all of this is written in the charts now what this is going to play out exactly we will have to monitor closely in the coming time we will have to monitor closely in the coming time but i already gave you parameters that allow you to prepare yourself for whatever comes because whatever comes it's not going to be easy and smooth it's going to be anything but easy and smooth now, if you want to prepare yourself in these coming upheavals and in the global upheavals that we're in, then you can use the astrology, the way that I showed you, you know, for personal use. We can go really, really, really deep on a personal level to understand where are your risk zones, where is your global spots. You know, when you're looking at global navigation, that you can optimize your outcomes for your personal, spiritual and financial development as well as minimize your risk personally we can look at we can look at all of that and much more if you want to work with me i am open for consultations you can find the links below where you can book consultations with me i have open spots and we can look at this and many other things as well now with regards to the events and the developments in the world let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of what you'd like to analyze what you'd like to see analyzed more and i'm going to take that into account too when making my next videos if you haven't done so yet like this video subscribe if you haven't done so yet and i see you the next time be well be blessed